So if you've been watching the series so far, you'll know that I started out with building a uh, new server using a Chinese X79 motherboard, uh, which is working really well. Although the documentation is not great on these boards, uh, it does seem to have fairly standard chipsets. Now, if you have been watching, you will know that I did plan to connect up eight hard drives using the SAS connectors inside of the chassis that I got using some kind of SAS card or HBA card. However, after trying some multiple different cards that I do have, such as this LSI 9210 card I have here and a HP P420, I was not able to get these to boot using the X79 motherboard. Now it could be some kind of conflict with the chipset, I'm not really sure. Putting these cards into IT mode also doesn't really seem to have any effect. It seems to be a conflict with the motherboard's chipset and these cards, so I'll have to look further into that. So what we are going to do in this video, and I'm going to show you in this video, is how to pass through hard drives directly to TrueNAS via Proxmox using the onboard SATA controllers that are on most motherboards. Uh, in this way, TrueNAS will see the hard drives as standard and will be able to control them fully as they would be if they were passing through some kind of HBA card. Bearing that change, everything else has been running super great with the actual server itself. We have the media server running, Jellyfin, right now. Uh, I have Proxmox behind me. The server's been on for quite some time now, a few weeks. It's been really stable. And so I'm gonna take the camera over to the computer and then I'm gonna take you through setting up TrueNAS inside of Proxmox, as well as passing through the SATA hard drives directly to TrueNAS so it can see and set up a ZFS share inside of TrueNAS itself. So now that we're at the computer, we can see Proxmox. Uh, and you can see some information here as standard with the Proxmox installations, like the CPUs, the RAM, all the details here. Um, just so you know, this is running on the X79 Chinese motherboard that we've been building in the last few videos. Uh, if you haven't seen that, do uh, click up in the top right to see the build of this. It's been really interesting so far. Uh, so you can see the 32 CPUs. Uh, these are two dual, uh, dual CPUs with eight cores, so 32 threads with 128 gig of RAM. Um, and as you can see here, we already have one uh, VM installed. This is Jellyfin. This has been running really great. And you can see the local as well as the network synology. Just so you can see it first, uh, why the drives do not show up if you don't have a HBA card. So if we click on to uh, PVE and we click in disks here what we can see here is we have one hard drive which clearly has some information as well as four hard drives here now you can see they're all connected here um, and if we click initialize with a GPT and um, we'll initialize all of these now so now all the drives are initialized if we go to the media server which for me is ID 100 and we click on add hard disk and under SCSI uh, we will see the storage drop down as you can see it does not show here and if we drop this down and click on SATA and try again you can see they also do not show up if you had a PCI Express uh, some kind of HBA card or a SAS controller you will be able to pass through that controller directly through to the system under the uh, PCI device here and then you'll be able to take control of the hard drives that way. But since we do not have a SAS or HBA card inside the server, we have to pass through the hard disks manually to the system, to the virtual machine that we want. The first thing that we're going to need to do is we're going to need to create a virtual machine with TrueNAS on it. So we're going to click on PVE. We're going to click in the top right hand corner and we're going to click create VM. So here we have the system. Uh, I'm going to keep it under the same node. We're going to keep it as VM 101 since that's the next one in line. We're going to call this TrueNAS. And we're going to have this start at boot. We're going to click on next. Under operating system, all my VMs are under my Synology. I drop down the ISO image. I'm going to select TrueNAS. And then we're going to click next, keeping everything as defaults. On system, everything is defaults as well. Click on next. Under SCSI, we're going to keep everything here as defaults as well. I'm not going to change anything there. Next again, under CPUs, we're going to give it six cores uh, so that it has enough. I've got plenty of cores to play with. 
Uh, then we're going to click next again. And under memory, uh, we're going to need to allocate the correct amount of memory for this system. Now, TrueNAS requires that you have eight gigabytes of memory for the standard installation, plus one gigabyte for every one terabyte of storage. So in our case, we have eight gigabytes that we need for the TrueNAS plus 16 terabytes of storage, equaling to 24 gigabytes of RAM. So in megabytes, that's going to be 24,576. Uh, that is going to be the amount of RAM. Very important to note here is the ballooning device option. Um, ZFS wants to know how much it has all the time. And if RAM is not being used, it won't be allocated under the ballooning device system. So you need to turn this off so that ZFS knows and TrueNAS knows exactly how much RAM it has and it's always allocated all the time. So we're going to click next. I'm going to change nothing about the network because I just have one card. Next again, just double check all of the settings here. Everything looks good to me. And we're going to click finish. We're not going to start after created. We're going to click finish first. And once that's created, which won't take a second, you can see here it's popped up on the left, TrueNAS 101. That's great. Now we need to be able to give it the hard drives. But if we click here again, as before, it won't show the hard drives here because we need to pass them through. So if we click on PVE and we click on the shell, one of the first things that you need to do is you need to install a tool called LSHW. Uh, press enter. Mine's already installed, so it won't install anything, but you need this to list the hard drives. After you've done this, you're going to need to list the hard drives that you have using LSHW space dash class space disk dash class again space storage. If you press enter, what you will get is a list of all of your devices. This way you'll know that everything is showing up correctly. I'm just going to maximize this so you can see. You can see here we have disk zero Samsung. This is the SSD. Then after this, we have all these hard disks here, four terabytes you can see on each of these. So what you want to do is pay a note to this number here. This is the product number. As you can see, it's the same for me, but yours may be different. And then you can see the serial number here. This is also something to keep a note of. Um, if you were to type in another command, ls dash l forward slash dev forward slash disk forward slash by ID. And if you hit enter, you'll get a compressed list of all of this. And this is just an easier way to look at getting these IDs here that you're after. Um, there is one other way that you can find the list of these IDs if you don't want to do it this way. Uh, if I minimize this, in the hard disk lists uh, that you have under PVE, you'll actually find the model number here as well as the serial number here. So I'm going to open up my shell and you're going to want to type in a command uh, to pass these through to your virtual machine. The only other thing to keep note of is the number of ID that you gave to your virtual machine. In my case, it is 101. So if we type in QM set 101, uh, keep this to the ID for your virtual machine, you want to pass it through to press space. Uh, since this will already have a SCSI device, um, you need to give it SCSI 1. Mine already has one hard drive. If it has more, you're going to need to pass through and add another number every time you add a hard drive. If you don't know how many hard drives are attached, if you go to the hardware properties of a virtual machine, if I minimize that and show you, under hardware, under TrueNAS, you can see here we have one SCSI device, SCSI 0, which is where it's storing the actual um, kind of operating system of TrueNAS itself. So I'm going to open up Proxmox here, the show again. So we're going to assign this SCSI one space, and then you're going to assign it dev disk forward slash uh, by ID. Uh, we're not doing this by host point because that can change. So you want to ignore this kind of SDB, SDE, SDC. These can change. Uh, it doesn't happen often, but they do. So you're going to list it by ID. After the forward slash here, then you're going to put in the actual serial number and model number in its entirety. I've got these on a notepad document to the side. So I'm going to copy and paste the number here. And you can see here, this is one of my drives. 
Uh, I've missed the first part of this. I need to type in the ATA part. There we go. Now it's showing up and that's good. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the same command by pressing up. I'm going to change SCSI 1 to SCSI 2. And then I'm going to delete uh, the last part of this because all of my serial numbers are the same. And then I'm going to take the next one and I'm going to copy from my notepad document and I'm going to paste it in and I'm going to hit enter again. And then I've got the next one. I'm going to press up again. I'm going to go to SCSI 3 this time. I'm going to delete the last uh, serial number. I'm going to copy and paste the document again hit enter and then we're going to do it one more time scuzzy four delete the last number and then paste it in enter now so long as that's good i'm going to type in exit to get out of here and you can see here um without refreshing i have scuzzy one two three and four the hard disks all showing up correctly under tunas which is perfect so now that we've uh, set this up, we need to install Trunas. So we're going to hit the console button. We're going to hit start. And then it's going to start up the console for this. And we're going to hit uh, enter for the first option. Okay, and then we'll get to the console setup. I'm going to press our number one to install. And for the selection, I'm going to press spacebar on the SSD that I want. I'm going to say yes to wiping the system and I'm going to type in a password. Hit enter. Boot via BIOS since this is an enterprise board. Hit enter and then it's going to do the installation. So now that the installation is complete, I'm going to hit OK on this. I'm going to shut the system down. The reason for shutting it down is I want to remove the ISO image uh, from the um, hardware options so that it doesn't get confused in the future. So now that's all looking good. Now what we can do is we can start up uh, TrueNAS uh, once again. We'll go to the console, booting from the hard disk, and we're going to boot TrueNAS. So now that this startup is actually completed, we need to change a few things. The first thing that I need to change is I need to change the network interfaces because I do not want uh, this to be giving random IP addresses all the time. So I'm going to hit number one to go to network interfaces. Uh, I'm going to select uh, interface number one to change. Um, I don't want to remove anything from this and I don't want to configure the DHCP. What I want to do is give it a static IP address. So I'm going to give this 192.168.0.10. Uh, because I want that to be uh, the default configuration for that. I'm going to hit enter. I need to press enter first. Yes, I want to configure that. Uh, now you have to tell it the interface name, vtnet0. Hit enter. And now we have to type in the IP address, 192.168.0.10 forward slash 24. I haven't changed the locale settings on this yet, apparently. Then hit enter. Now it's 10. I don't want to change IPv6. No. Restart the network. It's okay. Now it's got the right IP address. But to make sure, I have to hop over to the UDM Pro that I have on the system. Now we have the TrueNAS system here. And as you can see, it's still on the 127. So I'm going to select that. I'm going to go to configuration, network, fixed IP address, change the last one to dot 10, and apply the changes. So it has the IP address there to make sure. Uh, we can now uh, go to uh, that IP address, 192.168.0.10, and we hit enter and see what we get. And there we go. Now we have that. So now what we need to do is we need to log into this system, and now we can see everything in the TrueNAS. We've got the CPUs, the six threads. We also have the order the RAM, and it's now it knows that order the RAM has been allocated. This was really important about the ballooning device. And now, if we go to storage and we go to disks, we can see exactly what we want to see here, which is all of the um, uh, information pass through enough to be able to see this. 
So, and this is how you can do it. Uh, now you can use TrueNAS uh, to manage the SATA uh, hard drives connected onto your motherboard without a HBA card and without a SAS controller. Now, since ZFS drives will have all of the information of the storage on, this will work perfectly fine. And so long as that you have these drives and if you were to plug them into a SAS controller later or a HBA card or, or to another system, then uh, in theory, you should be able to see these under any system. Um, so long as that the drives data remains completely intact, of course, since the RAID uh, setup is on the drives themselves. Um, and you can do it this way and it works perfectly fine. And if you want to upgrade the system later to a HBA card, uh, then again, it will work fine so long as you pass that card through to TrueNAS from Proxmox. Um, so I'm going to leave all of the information about the commands that you need to put in below. I hope this was really helpful. But if you liked the video, please press like and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more content from me. Um, and I will see you in the next video.